Hey Rockers! Today we're going to talk about a new mod that I'm currently developing with King Curve 64. But before we dive too deep into the project and the feature set of the new mod, I think we need to talk about how we got here. You see, this project is deeply rooted in the Smash Bros scene. This scene has risen from couch battles with family and friends into something much, much bigger, with local, regional, and even national tournaments. Now, the controller of choice for many Smashers has been the GameCube controller, a controller which has been impressively relevant for over 20 years. Naturally, as more people gathered together to play in events, showing off your customized controller kind of became a thing. For those of you who have not been there, it's kind of akin to the street racing scene a la Fast and the Furious. Now, the idea behind this mod is to take the Shine Wave, first introduced by Siri, to the next level. For those of you who are unaware, the Shine Wave mod is a reactive LED mod that reacts to you and your actions in game. As someone who's dedicated tons of time to the GameCube and GameCube controller modding scene, the idea of a mod that reacts while you play the game has always been the most desirable aesthetic mod. And trust me, this thing is going to get you some serious attention. So in this video, I plan to talk a bit about the history of the mod, talk about where we are in development, and finally show off the installation and of course, show it in action. So let's roll that intro and let's jump into it. So as mentioned in the intro, this mod dates all the way back to 2015 when Siri showed off the OG Shine Wave. Now to say it was popular is probably a little bit of an understatement as it got write-ups in both Hackaday and Kotaku, which is pretty impressive. In general, this mod was light years ahead of what anyone else was doing in the scene at the time. However, as time passed, it never really saw a commercial release, and there weren't any new firmwares other than the one that Siri initially showed us in his original video from 2015. While the concept was revolutionary, it was far from optimized. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. First, the installation was unrefined and difficult, and second, the code only worked on GameCube and Wii, and not the Wii U or the Switch. And finally, there's still that problem of the code only being designed for Falco. As a result, this amazing mod sat for an extended period of time without enough people using it. However, in early 2020, a coder and modder by the name of KingCurb64 reached out to me, wanting to collaborate on a new and improved Shine Wave. I was very hesitant at first as I knew the technical hurdles were not small and the project would require a lot of effort to bring it to where I wanted it to go. However, after a quick demonstration of some of the code he wrote, I was pretty easily convinced. You see, he figured out a way to consolidate the code and make it smaller, as well as customize the animation set to make it whatever you wanted it to be, effectively knocking out one of the three major hurdles that were previously mentioned. So with that in mind, we split the remaining two tasks, which was to give the Shine Wave Wii U and Switch compatibility and make installation easier. And well, here's what we came up with. First, let's kick it off with the hardware. Designing purpose-built hardware that fits into an existing product can be a very iterative process, and it often requires multiple versions of PCBs to be designed, prototyped, and made. Fortunately, having a partner like PCBWay has helped me a whole bunch. For $5 plus the cost of shipping, I can have 10 PCBs made and shipped out to me within 24 hours. Anyway, check out the link to PCBWay in the description below, and thanks to PCBWay for their help with this project and sponsoring this video. The goal from a hardware perspective was to make installation as simple as possible to allow the mod to be more accessible to a wider audience of people. The hardware consists of a main PCB, a C-Stick PCB, and finally a quick solder board, or QSB for short. The main PCB contains the microcontroller, some passive components, and a flex cable which eliminates the need to solder any wires to the rest of the boards. Now speaking of soldering, there are three ways to do this mod. Two of them involve soldering, and one is totally solder free. Let's talk about the soldering first, and then we can get into the solder free. The first soldering method is more of a future proofing, and involves soldering from this breakout QSB board to the three points on the bottom of the main Shine Wave PCB, and then simply running a wire between them. I don't plan to say much more about this method, as I don't expect it to be very commonly used, and like I said, it's more of a future proofing. The second way is to solder the three points of the QSB and run a flex cable to the main Shine Wave PCB. This method involves soldering three points in total and is really easy to do. From there, it is just a routing exercise to make sure all the flex cables are run to your liking, and if you so desire, maybe just a tiny bit of hot glue to hold down some of the flex cables and make everything look really tidy. This is the method that I would recommend. The reason I recommend it is the soldered connection will always be more secure than a solder-free option, and the connections will be more solid. 
However, that didn't really stop us from coming up with a solder-free option, so let's talk about it. The solder-free version of this mod is identical to the method we just discussed, with the only difference being that you put the adapter board into the cable header socket that holds the cable to the controller PCB. From there, it's simply a matter of running that flex cable to the main Shinewave PCB, and the rest of the install is no different than the previous method no noted. The only downside to this is the repeated insertion and removal of the solderless adapter will eventually wear down the cable header plastic over time and make the connections not very solid. Again, this is the reason why I prefer the solder method. But hey, it worked really well for us in testing, so we figured it might as well be an option for everybody. But yeah, as I continue to do the install here, I'm pretty much just at the point where I'm sticking down the PCBs and, you know, at this point just really routing cables and making sure that my cable management looks really good. You know, with the two flex cables, it just takes a little bit more time to get it to look really nice, but uh, honestly, it's pretty easy to do, and the only thing I'm going to add is maybe just the tiniest dab of hot glue to hold those flex cables in place. But yeah, one thing that was pretty fortunate was in the design of the original GameCube controller, they kind of added some spaces for cable management, specifically with the rumble motors, so hey, we're going to take advantage of that here, and we're going to route one of our flex cables through there, and that's for our C-Stick board. And like I said, just use that dab of hot glue to hold down the one that's going from our quick solder board to our main Shinewave PCB. Overall, I'd say the install is pretty easy and you're looking at, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes or so to do the installation for the first time. And if you start getting good at it, heck, you might be able to do it even faster than that. But yeah, just like that, the mod's installed, and uh, I think that's enough of me talking. I've got this awesome shell from Pujo Magic. It's a green, blue, purple, yellow color shift. It's really, really cool. So I think this is going to be a prime candidate, and I think we just need to custom cast a few goodies for this, and we should be sitting pretty... I'll be using some of this Illumilite Clear Resin. This stuff works really well. It's a really nice urethane-based resin that's obviously clear, as the name would imply. And it works great. I've been using it for a long time. I'd highly recommend it. If you're interested in trying it yourself, I got a coupon code from the manufacturer. You can use the code ROCKER10 and get 10% off. As far as the color goes, I think in this neon pink should look really, really nice with that shell. And of course, we're going to need it to be transparent given the Shinewave mod that we're going to be trying out. So anyway, let's get this stuff mixed in. We're going to go ahead and inject it into the molds. And uh, we're going to be doing a little bit more than just buttons here. We're going to also be doing a back shell as well as thumbstick and a C-stick. So we're doing the full kit. And I think it's going to look absolutely awesome with that shell. But anyway, let's montage through the rest of this, get all these molds injected, and get everything into the pressure pot. And with all those parts finally out of the pressure pot, it's time for reassembly. Now given our specific facts and circumstances, we are in a bit of a unique situation here considering the fact we're using a resin cast, and that cast was made from a newer Smash Ultimate shell. So there's a couple small trims that we're going to have to do to that resin cast. They're very easy to do and outside of the scope of this video, but otherwise this is business as usual. <laughs> Alright. Now this thing looks absolutely awesome, and we finally have a proper controller to show off this new mod. So with a proper controller built out, it's time to check out what this thing can actually do. Today we have created custom code for 30 of the 78 characters in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Throughout the video I've shown some of the Mario animations, and while it's probably not possible to feature all 30 of the characters, I do want to show some of my favorites. However, before we get into character specific animations, I want to briefly talk about what modes will be available. In total, there are nine different modes, 
and the modes can be selected by hitting both start and left on the controller at the exact same time. And the first mode is your character specific mode, but the second mode is what I call classic mode. And this mode allows you to go ahead and match the animations of the LEDs to the actual colors of the original buttons that came with the GameCube controller. So in other words, A is green, B is red, X and Y are white, and Z is purple. Next is always idle animation, and as the name would imply, it's always going to be on its idle animation, which is a slow rainbow fade. And of course, whatever buttons you push have no impact because it's not a reactive mode. Next is always red, and as the name would imply, it's always going to be red. Follow that up with always green, always blue, always orange, always yellow, and finally, always purple. Having all these different modes should allow you to pick whatever suits your mood. But with that out of the way, I think it's time we take a look at some of these custom character animations. So I just plan to show a few highlights here. Each of these characters have full animation sets built out for them. But let's start with Jigglypuff since we showed some HBox clips earlier. But yeah, we're going to show the rollout attack. And in this attack, Jigglypuff is obviously rolling out. And he's got all kinds of purples and yellows and whites kind of surrounding him as he's doing that attack. And you'll see the LEDs animate and match to that same color aesthetic. Next up, let's talk about Roy's Fireblade, or his Neutral B. This thing lets out a monster fire slash with a sword, and as you can kind of see here, these LEDs literally animate to that fire that you're seeing on his sword. Finally, I'll leave you guys with some Young Link play, and you can see what this looks like in real time. So where do we stand with this project? Well, at this point the hardware is done, and we are putting some finishing touches on both Wii U and Switch full integration, as well as some other small quality of life features such as allowing the C-Stick to integrate with your smash attacks, as well as making brightness adjustments to the LEDs. From a GameCube controller adapter standpoint, the primary goal of this is to be used with the OEM, Wii U, and Switch adapters. However, our beta testers have already reported back that there is a much larger range of adapters that are compatible with this mod. While we don't have a set date in mind of when this project is going to wrap up, the plan is for it to roll out later this year, and I will make an update video once we are all finished. As for animation sets, we are continuing to roll out more animations for more characters. While it's doubtful we'll have animations made for the full cast of characters in Ultimate, we'll have them done for all the characters in Smash 64 and Melee, as well as some of the most popular characters from the rest of the games. But you guys will have to let me know, not only who you want animation sets for, but what you think of the mod in the comments below. Anyway guys, I'll definitely keep you up to speed on this one, and make sure you guys check out this video here at the end, because if you enjoyed this one, I'll be sure you're going to enjoy that one as well. Catch you guys for the next one here soon.